coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. You need to plug your finances into the same principle that God himself, whom you're crying out to for money, you're crying out to for breakthrough. He tells you, stop crying out and doing all this fasting and praying for money. Plug it into the autopilot system. Plug it into the system. That's what autopilot is. That runs without thinking, just reflexive and responsive. It just keeps going. That's what an autopilot system is. Partners run with the vision, partners share in the provision. We invite you to become our partner today. Visit www.freshdew.tv or call plus 234-700-3737-4339 for details. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene. And it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh G. Fresh G is a program designed just for you. It's designed to build you up and give you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Today on Fresh G, we take part 122 of our message series, Marriage 101, 10 Important Things About Marriage. Marriage 101, 10 Important Things About Marriage, part 122. 22. What are the important things we've looked at so far? The first was that marriage does not complete you, but rather it complements you. The second was that God is the originator of marriage. The third, marriage is a spiritual, scriptural covenant 
are more than just a legal contract. The fourth, marriage is one of the most major and important destiny decisions you will ever make as a believer. Five, sex is an integral part of the marriage covenant. Six, there are rules for the husband and the wife in the marriage union. And seven, we looked at communication, a litmus test in marriage. Eight has been money matters in marriage, M-M-I-M. We have been looking at finances in marriage. We began by exploring the three realms of abundance. Then we got to understand the purpose of money from God's perspective. And it's good that couples get on the same page with God and get on the same page with each other. Thirdly, we looked at the roles, our roles where finances are concerned, role definition in finances. Then we began staying on top or staying on top, yes, in your finances, staying on top in your finances. First thing we said there was we must learn to put our salaries in the right perspective. Put your salary in the right perspective. Second thing we began to look at on staying on top in your finances was we said you need to be faithful with your tithe and with your seed. And we ended the last episode just mentioning the tithe. Now let's get to the seed, which is really what we are going to focus on. So seed, what is a seed? Definition now, a seed is a unit or the unit of reproduction of a flowering plant capable of developing into another such plant. That tells it all. The unit of reproduction of a flowering plant capable of developing into another such plant. To seed, verb, is to cause something to begin to develop or grow. From the Greek, we see the word sporos, and it literally means a scattering of seed. Concretely, seed as sown seed. Something that jumps out from all these definitions is that seed is a trigger for your increase. Seed is a trigger for your increase. In other words, without the planting of seed, there can be no increase. Without the planting of seed, there can be no harvest. There can be no increase. It's really that simple. Trying to believe for an increase, for an increase or a harvest without seed is like magic. And that doesn't work. Without seed, there can be no increase. Look at the definition again. A unit of reproduction capable of reproducing itself and developing into another such plant. There's so much in just that, just that definition. So if you look at these two scriptures, two of my favorite seed scriptures, Proverbs 11 to 24, there is one who scatters yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. Second Corinthians 9, 10. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for fruit supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So 2 Corinthians 9, 10 shows us that there are two aspects to your increase, bread and seed. And what we're going to focus on is what, for me, is the more important one, which is seed. And we're going to see why it's more important. Bread and seed. So let's now focus on the seed. And that's what we're going to look at. We're talking about how to stay on top in your finances. And we say you need to be faithful in your tithe and your seed. You need to be faithful in your tithe and in your seed. So let's begin this. Five truths about our seed. What are five truths about our seed? The first truth we're going to begin with today. Truth number one, God respects the seed principle. Why would you not? Are you smarter than he is? I like that. I wrote that. Let me say it again. So friend who's watching, God, almighty God, who created you? Who is the originator of the marriage you're in? Who is the one that empowers you to prosper? That's God, not another one. He actually respects the seed principle. Why would you not? Are you smarter than he is? When you look at the entire world and the entire universe today, it was created by the seed of the word of God. It was God planting the seed of his word that produced the entire universe and produced the entire world, which we are still discovering today. If you read Genesis chapter one, it is full of, listen, and God said, and there was. What do you think that is? When you read the scriptures, look and you actually see the seed principle literally embedded everywhere. And God said, and there was. 
that could be. And God planted and he reaped. That's what it was. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God sowed the seed of his word. And then God had what he said. The seed principle. You see that at the beginning of the whole thing in Genesis chapter 1. So Hebrews 11.3 says this. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. They were made by the word of God. Hebrews 11.3, Philips, as it is after only by faith that our minds accept, that our minds accept as fact that the whole scheme of time and space was created by God's command, that the world which we can see has come into being through principles which are invisible. What are those principles? The seed principle. You will have what you say. What you sow is what you reap. It is only by faith that you can accept that and believe that. That the whole scheme of time and space was created by God's command. That the world which we can see has come into being through principles which are invisible. The Passion Translation. Faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's words. He spoke, he sowed the seed, and the invisible realm gave birth, produced to all that is seen. You know, when you read that again, you see the seed principle. Many of us know Mark 11, 22, 24, and we quote that a lot. And let me read it again for some of us who don't know it. Many people read the scripture. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith. So it is really the scripture on faith. Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done. He will have whatever, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them again embedded in there the same way. It is only by faith you can accept and see that God planted the seed and he had the entire universe and the world. That is the way creation happened. It is only by faith you can see that. And Jesus taught the disciples and taught us. He says, look, have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. Have faith the way God has it. Have the seed principle working through your words. When you speak, it is what you say. That seed that you will have the harvest. That is the way it works. So God himself respects the seed principle. And we saw all through Genesis chapter 1, he created, he created, he created. Simply, he threw out the seed and God said, and there was the harvest came. And it wasn't just the world and the trees and the animals. He created man exactly the same way. And on the sixth day, look at what happened. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all he had created, and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said, be fruitful, be fruitful. You see what he said immediately? Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air. That was the end at verse 38. So God created the entire world in those six days and he created man as well. And he never, after that, created man again. He never, after that, created a tree again. He never, after that, created an eagle again. He never, after that, created a lion again. Why? Why didn't he do that? Well, look at what he did here. After he said and he created, he blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. How would he tell them to be fruitful and multiply if he hadn't created them or created them with the ability to be fruitful and multiply? He created them with the ability to be, so he created them, male and female. I've got a plan at the moment here. 
He created the earth by Adam and Eve. And he said to them, go off now, be fruitful and multiply. He wouldn't have done that if he didn't know that as he was creating them, he was making them like him with the ability to produce and the ability to reproduce. So he never needed to create a man again. He never needed to create a palm tree again. He never needed to create an Iroko tree again. He never needed to create a dove again. He never needed to create an eagle again. He never needed to create a chicken again. No, he didn't do that. Glory be to God. So this is showing you that God himself respects and honors the seed principle. God runs things by the seed principle. Why wouldn't you? Are you smarter than he is? Sometime in 1998, incidentally, it was episode 16 of Fresh Deal. And this is episode 1000 and something what I'm teaching right now. So episode 16 in 1998, I had a series called Lessons from the Day of Creation. I'll be preaching that very soon. Lessons from the Day of Creation. And part 16, episode 16 rather, which was part three, was a lesson from the third day. And in the third day, what we discovered in that series was that God taught us the seed principle. He showed us what we're showing you here right now. Look at what he said in Genesis 1 verse 11. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed. You see how God quantified what he was creating. See, look, I'm creating this grass now. But listen, it is going to be a herb that yields seed. Because I'm not coming back here tomorrow to create this grass again. I'm not coming back here tomorrow to create this herb again. I am giving you one that yields seed. That's it. If it yields seed, then I don't need to create it again. And the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day from the ERV. Then God said, let the earth grow grass and make grain and fruit trees. The fruit trees will make fruits with seeds in it. Why? So that those seeds will be capable of reproducing themselves and producing more fruit trees. And God, after he settled down on the seventh day to rest, was not going to be tapped up to come and create an orange tree again because the last one, all the oranges had finished. He said, no, no, I'm giving you an orange tree that will produce oranges with seed in them. And that's it. I'm done creating because I'm plugging this whole thing into a very powerful principle of producing and reproduction called the seed principle. The fruit Trees will make fruits with seeds in it, and the plant will make its own kind of seed. Let these plants grow on the earth. And it happened, and the earth grew grass and plants that made grain, and it grew trees that made fruit with seeds in it. Every plant made its own kind of seed. Look at the wisdom of God. And God saw that this was good. God saw that the seed principle was good. Why wouldn't you? He's smarter than he is. God did all of this. And what we see jumping out on the third day was yielding seed, seed bearing, fruits with seed in it, seed after his own kind. And he settled down and said, I've done that. This is good. I don't have to come back to this project again. Literally, God created a system that was running on autopilot. <laughs> that's what he did. That's, the, that's what he did everywhere. A system that ran on autopilot. That's why Genesis 8.22 says, While the earth remains seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer and day and night shall not cease. They will not cease because it's on autopilot now. Everything that was created was created with seed in itself. I've got breaking news for you, child of God who's watching. If you want your finances to run on autopilot, you need to plug your finances into the seed principle. You need to be faithful with your seed, glory be to God, according to the purpose of money like we learned earlier. You need to plug your finances into the same principle that God himself, whom you're crying out to for money, you're crying out to for breakthrough. He tells you, stop crying out and doing all this 
fasting and praying for money. Plug it into the autopilot system. Plug it into the system. That's what autopilot is. That runs without thinking, just reflexive and responsive. It just keeps going. That's what an autopilot system is. It's a system that is preset. The heading, the destination is preset and the plane just goes off to that place. That's what you can do with your finances. You can have your finances on autopilot. You can have money matters in your marriage and in your family on autopilot. When you take charge and plug in to this seed principle, God himself honors it. God himself runs things by it. That's why Jesus said, have the God kind of faith. When you sow the seed, you will have what you say. Just the same way God created the whole thing. Amen. Now, there are over 7.5 billion people on the earth, I'm told, and still counting. Some, some population clocks will tell you 7.9 even as at 2021. So 7.5 and counting. You've got people like that, billion people. But God created man once. Once. So where did all them, where did you come from? Where did all those 7.5 come from? He said to Adam, be fruitful and multiply. And the whole thing began, autopilot began from there. That is how the provision and supply of mankind came on autopilot. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 22. For as in Adam, all die, even so in Christ, all shall be made alive. If he says all die in Adam, it means all were in Adam. All cannot die in Adam if all didn't come from Adam or all were in Adam. So he created Adam with fruit seed-bearing ability, and that's it. He never created man again. But then what happened? Adam sinned. We know the story. We're going to see that God still respected the seed principle. What we are doing today is letting you see, child of God, that God in his infinite wisdom, God who can do all things, believes in the seed principle, runs things by it, practices it and teaches you the same principle. If you want your finances, if you want indeed any area of your life, it's like sitting down and looking at your wife and holding hands and looking at your husband and say, today we want a baby. Oh Lord, give us a baby. Baby, baby, baby cometh forth. In fact, Lord, we want twins. Twins in the name of Jesus. Branda, Shakara, Boseke, twins. And all you're doing is holding hands. Not going to happen. No, because there's a way it happens. There is seed that needs to be planted. You need to stop praying and get going. You need to do what you're supposed to do. And when you do that, when the grace and the blessing of God is upon that thing which you do, which you're supposed to do, what then happens? The seed from the man goes into the woman, and then you can see the manifestation of your prayers. Babies are going to come by your holding hands. Babies are going to come by your fasting and praying only. There are other things you need to do. That's the way God runs things. And that's what he expects you to do as well with your finances. So what then happened when the seed of Adam was corrupted? And because of time, I'm going to stop here and we'll continue this from next episode. So if there's nothing else you've really gotten from today, you want to ask yourself that question. Am I smarter than God? If God himself, created by the seed principle, if God himself runs things by the seed principle, if God himself is able to rest, if God himself is able to set back and not worry anymore about running out of people or running out of trees because he knows that everything is running on autopilot because of the seed principle, am I going to be able to rest? and not worry about running out of money and running out of things in my family if I can also understand the same principle, the seed of my words and the seed I sow from my finances can get my finances running in this family on autopilot. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for showing us the truth. Thank you for opening yourself to us and letting us see how you operate. Thank you because we are your children. We are not strangers. We are not bastards. We are like you. We give you praise, our Father. 
Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.